So we are working on finding increasing and decreasing of graphs. In the last video, we figured out how to do it visually when the graph was given. In this video, we want to figure out how to do it when we don't have a graph to go off of. Well, we have some steps to follow, and those are outlined here. The very first thing that we want to do is, given the function, we want to find the domain. And for review, that means we're going to figure out which x values are excluded from the domain. Um, typically, we focus on two things, where the denominator is equal to zero and where we have square root of a negative number. We want to worry about this first because if it is excluded from the domain, then we don't want to have to worry about it in the rest of the graph. We just know that those values don't exist on our graph in the first place. The next thing that we do is we want to find the derivative because remember the derivative gives us the slope. And so if we're looking for increasing and decreasing, of course the derivative is going to be the most important part. Now, after we find the derivative, we want to set it equal to zero because that's going to be where it transitions from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. So these are going to be our in-between points. And what these are called are the critical values. So the critical values are any time it switches from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. After we find these critical values, we put them on a number line. And so this number line is going to represent our x-axis, what x values are represented on our entire graph. So once we get this x-axis set up with our critical values on them, we need to figure out what's happening in between the critical values. We do that by testing points. We test these points in our derivative function because we're looking for slope. And we're looking for positive slopes, which means the graph is increasing. And we're looking for negative slopes, which means the graph is decreasing. Once we get our number line filled out, or sometimes you'll hear me call it a sign chart, once we get our sign chart filled out, that's going to give us the answer. So the very last thing that we have to do is just select the appropriate intervals to give us the answer that we're looking for. Now, since we are in the technology era, I would, of course, encourage you to always check your answer, and you do that by using your graphing calculator. So now that we have these steps outlined, let's actually run through an example of trying to figure out where a graph is increasing and decreasing. I have my steps listed over here on right in case we want to reference them, but I have my function over here on the left. Find the intervals of increasing and decreasing for this function. f of x equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x minus 7. Okay, so we're going to run through this step by step. The very first step that we're going to do is we're going to find the domain. Remember the domain is the possible x value on the graph, and those are restricted from when we have zeros in the denominator and square roots of negative numbers. In my function here, I don't have any denominators, and I don't have any square roots. Therefore, my domain is going to be all real numbers. So I don't have anything excluded from this graph. If we did, those, along with our critical values, needed to go on our number line. If we don't have any exclusions from our domain here, then we don't have to worry about that when we're setting up the line. Step number two is to find the derivative. So we need to figure out what f prime of x is. This should be a piece of cake past all the last chapter of finding derivatives. This one's pretty easy since it's a polynomial form. We have 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. Okay. After we find our derivative, we set our derivative, same thing, 6x squared plus 6x minus 12, and we're going to set it equal to 0. 0 is going to be where we transition between increasing and decreasing or vice versa. This is just a quadratic function. You can solve it any way you prefer. I like to do it by factoring. 
So I'm going to factor first my constant factor out. So that leaves me with x squared plus x minus 2. And then factoring my trinomial. I have x plus 2 and x minus 1. So that's going to give me a negative 2 if I multiply it, and it's also going to give me a positive 1 when I add it. So when I solve this, first I have 6 equal to 0, which I throw away because it doesn't make any sense. And I also have x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1. These are my critical values. This is where my graph transitions between increasing and decreasing. Okay. So we're on step number four now. We're going to go ahead and set up our number line. So this number line is representative of what our derivative is doing. Our derivative, or f prime of x, is equal to zero when your x value is equal to negative two and when your x value is one. So in step number five, we need to figure out what's happening in between these intervals. So what's happening from negative infinity to negative 2, what's happening from negative 2 to 1, and what's happening from 1 to infinity. So we need to pick test points in between these to figure out whether they are positive, meaning our derivative is greater than 0, or whether our graph is increasing, or negative, where our derivative is less than 0, or where our graph is decreasing. So let's just go ahead and set up a chart. It's easiest to kind of summarize this in a chart here, just to keep everything organized better. So in my very left interval, I need to pick a test point here. Let's just go ahead and pick my test point to be negative 4. But anything smaller than negative 2 would work. In my center interval, I need to pick a test point. The easiest point to pick is going to be 0. And on the right, my test point that I'm going to pick is something larger than 1, so let's just say 3. But again, anything would work. We are going to test these in our derivative function. Now, we could test them in the very first derivative function that we see here, but it's actually going to be easiest to test this in the factored function because I'm just looking for signs, not actual values. So if I test this in my function of 6 times x plus 2 times x minus 1, remember I'm only looking for signs. So if I plug negative 4 in my first piece, 6 is always going to be positive. If I plug negative 4 into this piece plus here, negative 4 plus 2 gives me a negative 2 or negative. And if I plug negative 4 in my third piece here, negative 4 minus 1 gives me a negative value. So if I take positive times negative times negative, all my negatives cancel out, and that leaves me with a positive. So that tells me that over here, my derivative is positive. Therefore, my graph is increasing from left to right. OK, let's do it again with 0. So 6 always stays 6, so that's positive. If I take 0 plus 2, that gives me 2 or positive. If I take 0 minus 1, that gives me a negative 1 or negative. So my answer here is negative. So that tells me that in between negative 2 and 1, my derivative is negative. So my graph is decreasing from left to right. And last, if I plug in 3, of course, 6 stays positive. 3 plus 2 becomes positive and 3 minus 1 becomes positive. So this becomes positive, so this becomes positive. So my graph is increasing from left to right. So if you want to help you summarize increasing and decreasing, you might do arrows. So from here, my graph is increasing, going up from left to right. Here my graph is decreasing, going down from left to right. And here my graph is increasing, it's going up from left to right. So there kind of gives you a good shape of the graph, and that helps you visualize better what's actually doing. So that was step number five, was our test points on our interval. And step number six is actually just, just taking out the answers. So, okay, the very left hand of my number line is represented by negative infinity. 
the very right hand side of my number line is represented by positive infinity. And now we can pick out increasing where my graph is going up. So it's going up from negative infinity to negative two right here. And it's going up from one to infinity right there. We can also pick out decreasing. Decreasing is where my graph is going down or the negative. And so that's happening between negative two and one. So I have my appropriate answer. So all the last thing I need to do here is check this with my graphing calculator. So let me do that by substituting in my original function, 2x to the third plus 3x squared minus 12x minus 7. If I graph this on the standard window, zoom 6, we can see my graph goes up and down naturally. I'm missing a little bit of the graph, so let me adjust my window. I'm guessing I'm missing just a little bit here and a little bit there, because this is a cubic function, and we knew the shape follows something like this here. So let me adjust my y minimum to be a little bit smaller, my y maximum to do the same thing, and adjust the tick marks to be a little bit bigger because I'm changing my scale. So now we can see the full image of this graph. So we can see that my graph is increasing through here, and so that happens until this value right here, and that value is negative 2. So my increasing from negative infinity to negative 2 works. Then it's decreasing from negative 2 to this value right here. That value happens to be right here, our x value of 1. So decreasing from negative 2 to 1 works. And last, I am increasing from here to here. So I'm increasing from 1 to the very right edge of the graph of infinity. So I have picked my appropriate answers. The next time when we check with the graphing calculator, I will show you specifically how the calculator can find these points of switching between increasing and decreasing for you. So you don't have to just eyeball it like we did it from here. Okay, that's where I'm going to end this video. In the next video, we're going to be working through another example of finding where my function is increasing and decreasing.